welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Gratitude places you in the energy field of plentitude. Perceiving life in a consciousness of gratitude is literally stepping into another dimension of living. Suddenly, the seeming ordinariness of your days takes on a divine sparkle. Michael Beckwith. Are you striving to meet the daily challenge to 10x your business? Become known for your products or services on JMMB Radio Podcast, heard in over 200 countries, or if you're ready to take the leap, move to Mindset Movers TV as a host or series producer, broadcasting to the combined audience of Roku and Fire TV. Every day in business has its challenges. Find a partner with Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Contact us at jmmbradio at gmail.com. Ashley Holmes is a holistic fertility coach. She helps women struggling with infertility to release energy blocks by connecting mind, body, and spirit. She customized a one-on-one program to help relieve the stress of infertility so women can conceive with ease. She also has a chapter in a book being, which will come out in February called The Sacred Dance, Wisdom from Leaders Living a Soul-Led Life. Her chapter details her journey from infertility to fertility. Welcome, Ashley. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Yes, welcome. Welcome, my dear. So I always like to know how people got started on the road that they're on. So can you talk a little bit about your beginnings? Definitely. I feel like my journey chose me. And it's only in hindsight you realize why everything happened the way that it did. And it's taking those lessons. And, you you know, I believe your greatest struggles become your greatest strengths. And to help women now who are in a place where I once was. I mean, bringing a child into the world is really a great gift. So helping people who are struggling and honoring them where they're at and meeting them where they're at is really an privilege and an honor. Absolutely. Yes. When when did you realize that you had a problem with fertility? How did that come about? I was in my 20s when we started trying to conceive and I really was in denial for quite a long time, you know, thinking this was just going to happen. I'm young and I'm healthy and there's no reason why it shouldn't be happening. And, you know, it probably took a good 18 months where I was like, okay, like, you know, it's time to go to the fertility clinic. But I knew that was going to lead either to, you know, the desired result or it was going to end in heartbreak. You know, once you go down that road, it's kind of, you know, that is a commitment. Like you're going to have your answer or so I thought at the time. Yes. And that's so funny we're talking about that because for many years, I was told I couldn't have children for many years. And at 39, I I became pregnant. And I was like, I was questioning. I was like, are you sure? They were (laughs) laughing at me and everything. I was like, do we need to redo that test? Because y'all been telling me I cannot have kids. Mm. And at 39, God bless me with a, a healthy boy. And uh, it's been amazing ever since. Uh, and so, you know, you just don't know what really is going on until it happens. Now, when you went down that road of fertility, going to see someone, what did you find? I found that it was really an outer body body experience you know Mm. I didn't enjoy the side effects or the invasiveness or any of it and 
I was blessed with twins and I was very grateful, but it was not a road I would ever go down again. Mm. And I think that it can be a very emotionally draining and, you know, physically challenging time. And there's just not a lot of support. You know, you can have all the medical and physical support and answers, but there's nothing else for women. And that's what I really found that that is what allowed me to conceive naturally was incorporating holistic practices into my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we've heard that so many times about, you know, people, I mean, you have the medical staff, but you have nobody to help with the emotional part of it. And that's really where you need the most help. <laughs> it yeah. really is. It truly is. Wow. Because, and once I initially, I was not aware that I'm more than my physical body. And once I was, and I could tap into these other layers of my being and work with my energy and, you know, pl find that place of calm and peace within versus, you know, whatever the external circumstances are, just to be able to be centered and grounded no matter what comes my way is really being life changing and just has created a very positive ripple effect and I am so grateful for all of the teachings I've learned. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, you have twins and that's wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but can you talk a little bit about discovering that path? Like you said, there was no support. You you got I, through it as best you could, but how did you get to this next phase of learning? So mm -hmm. when my twins were little, I started going to yoga as a little bit of me time, self-care, and it, a once a week thing turned into, you know, a habit, and I wanted more. And at first, I didn't understand why I was so drawn and why every single time I got on my mat, I walked away feeling like a totally complete different person. There was just, just such an energetic shift every single time. And so I started doing teacher trainings, but it wasn't until I really started incorporating the quieter, gentler aspects, really stepping out of fight or flight mode into rest and digest mode and relaxing and calming my nervous system, giving it that reset. That is what made all of the difference, you know, releasing the past and the emotions that were there and just surrendering and embracing what is completely changed and transformed my life. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. So you're, you're, um, so how do people get in touch with you? Let's go there first. Cause I, I don't want to forget to do that because this is so juicy. This is a really very rich conversation and very important conversation. So how do people get in touch with you? So if you are yourself struggling with infertility, you can join the Holistic Fertility Coach Facebook group. And the other thing to keep in mind is that even if you yourself aren't struggling, someone in your life is. It is so prevalent and it is so, you know, not discussed and such a closed sort of topic where people are just struggling and suffering silently and it's kind of bringing some light and love and you know saying here's a community you know this is going to benefit you to have a happy healthy pregnancy and you're going to be more tuned in and connected to your body and to your baby on the other side and I mean everything I learned has benefited me you know to this day, I use things that I learn every single day. Yes. Well, what are some of those things that you use? I know you mentioned yoga. Is there so, a particular type of yoga that you were doing? or? So part of my one-to-one -one program incorporates yin yoga, restorative yoga, chakra balancing. So coming back into balance and alignment where and healing the sacral chakra where your reproductive organs are housed and you know offering reiki and healing modalities like that when you experience your period and you're sort of at your energetic low point in the month so to help just lift you out of that lower energy vibrational 
update so that you can keep on going, you can keep on trying, and it doesn't feel like such a lonely struggle. Could you kind of like walk us through what you do with on your one-on-one -on -one to discover what the what your client needs, what the client needs are? So, say someone, for example, comes to me and they've experienced miscarriage or they've had failed IVF. I mean, there is always a certain degree of loss. So it's sort of honoring losses that have occurred and, you know, taking the time to acknowledge that and accept that because I think often, you know, it's just pushed down and it's not addressed. And it's sort of taking that time to, you know, embrace those emotions, process them and shift them and move past that so that you can have this state of being that is just open to receive. I like that. I like that too. Absolutely. Wow. That is something because that's this is something that women need, desperately need. And like you said before, they're sitting in silence because they're afraid because there's nobody really around that really understands what's going on unless no. you've been there before. That's as well. As much as our spouses or partners love us, when they're not the ones going through it and they haven't experienced it themselves, it's really hard for them to be able to know what to do to help you. I mean, they love you to death, but, you know, they don't really have the tools and resources and skills to be able, mm -hmm. and they're navigating this uncharted territory with you, you know? On that note of navigating with you, now, does some of the husbands participate as yes. well? It's totally open. I mean, anything that I do can be done as a couple, or it can be more individual. But if someone is coming to me and they have endometriosis or they have PCOS, you know, it's like working with what is showing up for them so that, you know, to give them the healing medicine that they really need, that's going to work the best for them, for their body. So incorporating some Ayurvedic principles in there and working with their dosha and their constitution so that, you know, they're coming back into balance and really reaching that optimal state of health to conceive because what you do now is affecting the egg through that's coming in three to four months. So just taking that time and really, you know, it's not selfish to focus on you when you want to bring a life into this world. Yeah. I think that's really interesting because what you're talking about, I want to talk about the book that you're a part of too, uh, is that there was a time at least in some cultures, I know Native American cultures, women had a special time. In fact, when we talk about lodges, they really were for women, not for men. I don't know how men ended up taking over the lodges, but it was for women during their menses. And years ago, centuries ago now, all women in one village would have their periods at the same time. So they had this special time where they just took care of their bodies and made sure that they were just kind of a, a chance to let down and be okay. You know, um, we would say in modern terms, they had a chance to chill out and let yeah. the husband take care of the children. <laughs> <laughs> they go hide out in the lodge for a few days, you know, uh, and that is as in smart and intelligent and as whatever we think we are, there are certain things that we need as humans. And we as women need these times, the time when young girls just start. They need that time. That's a special time. When women are preparing to be pregnant, that's a special time. And then you go on even into menopause. You know, those are very special times and we don't honor them anymore. So I really like what you're doing because it will help the more people know about this, what you're doing, the more people will stop and think, I need to give myself, the women in my life, that special place. 
to really honor the fact that, you know, our bodies go through a change every month. Yes. And if you're having tr- trouble conceiving, that means you need to take even more care. Because, yeah, you know, really years, does. centuries ago, people were, a woman without a child, especially without a male child, was, you know, her life was over, you know. Um, so this is important work because, like you said, people do not talk about it. No. And I know I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I did have a friend. I actually worked with someone who went through um, the whole fertility thing. And I was probably the only person in the office who knew about it. And it was crazy because she took for, it took forever. And she would come in and be devastated because one more time it hadn't worked. But she did have one son, finally. But it it's was really hard the, to watch her go through that. It was hard to watch her go through it. The secrecy and the shame behind it, you know, like sneaking out to appointments and not being yes. open and honest about it. And there's just this whole added layer of stress and pressure and societal conditioning and all of these things that are just weighing on you. They really are. I know for myself, like my partner was checked and it, the issue didn't lie with him, you know, so it was like, okay, if we can't have kids, then this is on me, really, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's a big shoulder to burden. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's so funny that you said it's on you, but it doesn't always have to be on you. It could be your partner, but mm-hmm. somehow women take the weight. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's the first person that they point at. It's like, why can't you conceive? And it's like, something's going on you're not responsible you no know. it's it's just getting curious and inquisitive and getting in tune and in touch with your body you know listening to the messages that it's giving you because as much as i thought i was clued in and doing the best thing for my body when i was trying to have twins i was to a degree but not to the extent that i could have been you know, there was a big disconnect of mind, body, and spirit. And as soon as I, you know, came into alignment and actually learned how to listen to my body and breathe, I mean, all of us just think that, you know, these things don't matter. And they really, truly do. We take them for granted, you yeah. know, because you can regulate your emotions with your breath. You can change your state of being with your breath alone. It's so powerful and impactful. Wow. Yeah. That's something that's very true. Yeah. I think most of us don't even realize how important our breathing is. We don't, we're not even conscious of it because we're you know, not <laughs> until you, get, you have an asthma attack or something, or you see someone have an asthma attack. But as a basic, we don't pay attention to it. And yet, no. I'm coming to learn that it's it's very powerful. Yes. It's very powerful when you really recognize the fact that you're breathing and you take the time to be with your own breath. It's yes. Yes. pretty amazing. Yes, it is. I think when you take that time to make the unconscious conscious, that's where things shift and change and move. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you're running on autopilot. We live these yang busy lifestyles where we don't give ourselves permission to rest and when you slow down and just pause and pay attention and be mindful and aware then things can change and move and shift in the direction that you want so much easier yes yes it does and one of the things you said mind body and soul have to be in alignment Mm -hmm. because all one depends on the other. They depend on each other. It's, it's okay. just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And once we recognize that as as humans and, and take care of all of those areas, then we'll be better people all the way around. Oh, yeah. We'd be much more sane than we are right now. You know? And yeah. that's the thing. We, we are just so totally out of alignment. Yes, you know? we are. What's nice is that people are, there are more people who are becoming aware of that. And who are trying to make a conscious effort to become into a, alignment. So with that thought in mind, I know Ida wants to talk about your book, The Sacred Dance. Has that um, been published or are we still waiting? It comes out on March 4th on Amazon. It will be released. Oh, so that is very exciting. Very soon. And, you know, it's just been the biggest blessing to say 
you know, yes to myself and yes to doing this because, you know, it was just in so much alignment. You know, we would sit down for co-writing sessions, but we would just drop into meditation and we weren't talking or writing with each other, but it was just like a held sacred space where we just dropped into meditation. And honestly, the first day I just wrote for two and a half hours. And I cried and I just wrote until like I couldn't write or cry anymore. And it was like, <laughs> that's what needed to come out of me. You know, this is what my spirit was just asking to be told. So, you know, I know that that's exactly what needed to go into that book. What is the title of your chapter? It's called The Light Within. So it's truly awakening my spirit. And that is what happened because when I was younger, my brother died and when that happened you know my light really went very dim for a very long time and what I learned on my yoga mat was I was unconsciously creating loss in my life not Mm -hmm. from a conscious per place you know I wasn't consciously doing this to prevent myself from the very thing that I wanted but that's really what I learned and how I became aware of what was in my subconscious conscious mind and I it really gave me pause and was the biggest aha moment of my life and was like I really need to change you know my state of being the way I show up in the world my thoughts my breathing everything and just learned a better way and you know it's just had the biggest most positive ripple effect I could possibly imagine you know I've got a little one running around my house and you know, I'm blessed with three kids and, you know, just helping people, teaching yoga classes and meditations and workshops. And I'm writing another chapter for another book called Sacred Surrender. So sacred is just my word of 2022. It's just everything is coming into alignment. Yes. Wow. Very nice. Really busy. That is awesome. So how many authors are in the book? Well, there's about 15 authors. Okay. Yeah. And we, you know, it's just such a collaborative sort of effort and energy and positivity and to just be with, you know, there's a common thread through all of us. There's something you will resonate with everyone in every chapter. You know, we are so much more similar than we are different. And, you know, you just, you know, you feel at a soul level, whatever someone has written, even if it wasn't about infertility or whatever the case may be there's something that you're like you know it will hit you at a soul level where you'll be like yes I resonate with that because of whatever happened in my life oh absolutely yes and there's nothing new on the face of the earth (laughs) somebody's either gone through it getting ready to go through it or just coming out of it yes those three situations (laughs) that's pretty much it Yes, indeed. Wow, this is amazing. And the next book that you're writing, that you're involved in, uh, just give us a little snippet because we don't want to give it away. So it's, as soon as I saw the cover, it's it's got the tree of life on it. It looks very yogic. And I was just like, and when I saw the name Sacred Surrender, you know, Courageous Visionaries Impacting the World, I just... I was like, that is like, if I was going to create something, this is what I would have created. And it was just looking at me and I was like, yes, you know, there's, there's more to tell and a different way and a different twist to put on things and different parts to share. So, yes. and I realized after writing one that I was like, it just was the easiest and most effortless thing I've ever truly done. And I was like, I should be doing more of that. You know, like that is an alignment for me as well. So okay. you found awesome. your inner writer. Okay. <laughs> so who who are the visionaries for this book? The so Sacred Dance is with Sanctuary Publishing and Sacred Surrender is with Divine Destiny Publishing. Okay. Okay, but we would love to um, bring more of that energy Mm -hmm. on our platform. So we do a lot of anthologies, as you've probably seen around. We, you know, do a lot of those. And if you guys want to come back and everybody 
talk about the enchanter, that would be absolutely lovely. And we would definitely, we want that type of energy. You know, we mm -hmm. want people to um, be in alignment, you know, and understand that the, the mind, body, and soul are connected. And when yes. one is not good, it's going to affect the other and so forth and so on. So I am happy that you said yes and that we had this conversation because it's really been very powerful and maybe it's something to think about, you know, because sometimes, Definitely. like you said, we get busy, we're going here, we're going there, we're doing this and we're doing that, but we forget about that inner thing that keeps us actually going. Yes. Wow. Yes. So again, how can people get in touch with you? So they can find me on social media or through the Holistic Fertility Coach Facebook group. And the website is being built as we speak. So that will be up very soon. And okay. just getting the finishing touches on that. Yeah. Okay. And we've been talking to Ashley Holmes. And she has definitely made us think about checking in with our mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that, Ashley. We truly appreciate you. And we're looking forward to more collaborations because I think this people need to be aware of this. They need, need to be told all the time. You yeah. know, check in. You know, make sure your body, soul, and everything is in alignment so that you can be happy. Yes, that's what we all truly want. And, you know, I think oftentimes we're coming at it from, you know, just one of those places. Oh, I'm going to feel happy, you know, and they're doing all this mindset work, but then they're neglecting their physical body and their spirit, you know, or you're going just at a spiritual level, or you're just going at the physical level. And it's like, you've got to bring all of you into unison and work as a cohesive unit and then it's like you know you just feel lit up and just you know that state of bliss is there no matter what is going on around you you know like there can be chaos and three kids everywhere but it's like this is exactly as it's meant to be you know you release that resistance yes absolutely wow Thank you so much, my dear. We truly, truly appreciate you, and you will be coming back. I would love to, and I would love to collaborate further with you, and I'm sure everybody else, because it's all just, you know, uplifting everybody's vibrational frequencies. You know, every time you hop on to these calls with them, it's just, you leave just buzzing and, you know, feeling alive and lit up and, you know, just giving that and putting that out into the world. And I'm thrilled to know that, you know, there's a little piece of me that will be on the bookshelf when I know what no longer here, you know, my kids can pick that up and, you know, have mom's words there and know how they sort of came to be. Absolutely. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. That's a lovely legacy. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All righty, my dear. Thank you so much and blessings and love. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you guys. All right. Truly Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host. Ruth Haskins. We hope you enjoy the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.